welcome to progressive education society's modern college of pharmacy e lecture in the subject natural drug technology myself dr bhushan pimple here we will have a look at the traditional systems of medicine and in this topic we will specifically focus upon bhasma formulation and its evaluation bhasma are widely used formulations and they are also popular commercially bhasma are calcinated substances these are very fine powders obtained after calcination of the raw material calcination is incineration or burning to ash at very high temperature usually metals non metals and animal products are used as raw material and these are incinerated in closed crucibles to retain their potency metals lose their metallic properties such as conductivity and luster and they get converted to metal oxides thereby they attain non metallic properties now we will have a look at the method how bhasma is prepared it is divided into two or three stages the first stage is shodhan shodhan means purification this purification in this purification all the raw materials such as minerals metals or if they are obtained from marine or animal products are cleaned thoroughly sometimes they are washed the chemical purification is what is dealt with uh, dealing with only removal of foreign matter or removal of adhered matter whereas the ayurveda believes in medicinal purification Medi medicinal purification is different than chemical purification no doubt it also involves one of the step that is chemical purification removal of foreign matter besides it also aims at removal of harmful matter from the drug so suppose some marine or minerals or animal products those are loaded with fungi or pathogenic bacteria those are cleared then modification of undesirable physical properties of the drug like we have discussed metals they are conductive and lustrous which are not required for which are not required for the body normal metabolic processes of the body so those are modified to required or desired properties by converting them to metallic oxides conversion of certain characteristics of the drug some drugs they are not potent in their raw form but when they are converted to bhasma their potency is increased their characteristics are increased or they are made more potent some times the therapeutic activity is increased in presence of another crude drug or another metal so to attain additive effect or synergistic effect bhasma are prepared so the medicinal purification aims at these four major components further the um, shodhan process or purification process is divided on in two categories one is called as samanya shodhan that means simple purification which is nothing but chemical purification similar to chemical purification whereas the another is vishesh or special purification in samanya shodhan process this is applicable to the metals or minerals when we are preparing bhasma at a large quantity or if our crude uh, or our formula has more number of metals and minerals the metals are heated until they are red hot and then they are immersed in the specified 
liquids like either medicated oil or ghee that is butter milk or gomutra that is cow urine sometimes other liquids or juices of the plant are also specified so after heating the sheets till red hot they are immersed into these liquids then the conversion of the metal to metal oxide is initiated next is vishesh shodhana or special purification here it is applicable only in certain formulations and only to few of the crude drugs or uh, metals specified in the formula it involves various steps like bhavana which means again similar to heating heating eliminates the undesired uh, microbial contamination then swedan swedan means the heated element is powdered and it is allowed to swell in presence of moisture so certain hygroscopic minerals they take up the moisture and they swell this is called as swedan next is nirvapana nirvapana means removal of the moisture in the second step we are adding moisture and in the third step we are removing the moisture this is done by heating it at 70 80 or 100 degree after removal of moisture last step is mardan means trituration to fine powder so this vishesh shodhan is applicable only to certain crude drugs the second stage is maran process or trituration this also involves incineration here first the purified the first step which has already purified our crude drugs such purified crude drugs or metals minerals are taken and they are ground with either juices or decoction of certain crude drugs now this depends upon the formula and the process then after grinding we get the paste the paste is converted to small cakes and the thickness of the cake it, it depends upon the heaviness of the material heavier the metal thin the cakes are made thinner the cakes are made these cakes are well dried in sun and then they are placed in either earthen or metallic trays one they are placed in a single row or single line and this plate or the tray is further covered with another tray and these two trays are held in position by winding a clay smear cloth in seven consecutive layers again clay smearing prevents the cloth from burning as well as it also holds the two earthen or metallic plates firmly the wound cloth is allowed to dry so that it proper uh, ensures proper sealing of the trays such trays with which uh, which are wound with clay smeared cloth and dried are taken uh, and a pit is dug in an open play space and the diameter of or the depth of the pit depends upon metals or minerals to be calcinated it the diameter is also specified in the process half of the pit is lined with cow dung cakes and then the sealed trays are placed sometimes one sometimes many trays are placed then again the plates are covered with cow dung cakes and fire is lit after complete burning of the fire the trays are allowed to cool the seal is broken and the contents are taken out the contents are then added to stone mortar and pestle and are ground to very fine powder the process of uh, marana that is incineration and trituration can be repeated 
and that depends upon the either the specified process or also on the quality of the material that means if the ash is not properly formed it is again allowed to pass through the same process until the desired quality of ash or basma is produced now there are various sizes of pits specified in ayurveda or in the formula and this depends upon the basma to be prepared or the crude drugs to be incinerated next is suppose first is mahaputta mahaputta it is a pit that has dimensions of around 3 feet by 3 feet by 3 feet in all directions so it is a cubical pit now this kind of pit is used uh, when the temperature desired temperature required for incineration is around 1000 degree celsius so this is quite large pit and usually multiple trays can be fitted into the pit half of the pit always half of the pit is lined with cow dung cakes then the trays are placed then again cow dung cakes are placed above the trays and the fire is lit second is called as gajaput gajaput means the dimensions of this pit are around 2 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet roughly 22 inch or 24 inch some ayurvedic text or youtube videos do prescribe 24 inch by 24 inch by 24 now this gives slightly lesser temperature than mahaput gajaput is prescribed uh, if the amount or quantity of trees are less or if the temperature required is not that high but it is very close enough to mahaputta generally that depends upon the quantity to be incinerated the next is called as varahaput varahaput means varah means pig and gaj means elephant so varahaput means it is around 10 inch by 10 inch by 10 inch so again roughly around 1 feet by 1 feet by 1 feet so this kind of pit is also cubical in shape and it provides a temperature of around 600 degree celsius now this is the temperature what we usually use in our lab for determination of total ash or acid insoluble ash next is kukutput kukut means hen then uh, in this case half pit from all the sides are dug and a small pit is created again it is usually cubical so this also maintains the temperature of around 200 to 250 degree celsius next is kapot put kapot means uh, pigeon the names are given depending upon either the sizes or not exactly the sizes but the sizes of the pit and not at that of the animal here in kapot put just eight cow dung cakes are taken and the tray or in an earthen pot the material to be calcinated is just held over the flame of these 8 to 10 cow dung cakes the next is bhand put that means in an earthen pot the earthen pot itself acts as a furnace uh, in this pot a smaller earthen pot is placed and placed between some uh, paddy husk or uh, wooden pieces or charcoal charcoal or other pieces are lined below then some small uh, smaller earthen pot that can fit into this bhand or larger earthen pot is placed and then again on top of that some husk or dried sticks or stem pieces dried stem pieces are added and then it is lit so these are the different pits 
or methods of burning and this depends upon the temperature required for incineration after completion of the bhasma like we have ipqc parameter but that is in process quality control parameter now uh, like i said in the maran process that is uh, incineration and trituration it is repeated until the desired quality of bhasma is prepared now how to gauge how to see whether the desired property of bhasma has attained or not so the bhasma has a certain characteristics now these characteristics to determine the characteristics of bhasma or completion of bhasma formulation there is no need to use very, uh, modern analytical tools but simple techniques have been devised in ayurveda like first it should not have any luster non lustrous because we have used metals and when all the metal or metal particles have been completely converted into metal oxides they should lose their luster this is what is expected so this is called as nischandrika nischandrika means non lustrous so none of the particle of the bhasma should show luster if placed either in sunlight or daylight next if the bhasma is rolled between two fingers that is index finger and thumb it should not give any crystalline appearance or it should not be gritty instead all the particles should enter into the crevices of finger or fingerprints this is called as rekha purita that means between the uh, our fingerprints the what are whatever the crevices are there the particles should go and settle in that this means the particle size should be so small that it should enter into the crevices next a small a pinch of bhasma if it is added to cold and still water that means a stagnant water the bhasma should float on the water if it is sinking into the water that this indicates there uh, the metallic metal or minerals have not been completely converted into non metallic components so metals they sink in water whereas non metals or metal oxides since they have increased in their volume will definitely float on water this is called as varitaram varitaram means they should float on water next last bhasma should not revert to its original state that means there are chances that some of the bhasma are immediately after preparation they will show the above all three characteristics but if you place them for place the bhasma for one or two weeks again you might find the certain non metals being getting converted into metallic forms now this is again undesirable so the bhasma the conversion of metals to non metals should be completely non reversible reaction then we'll see about the preservation preservation of bhasma since there are no um, there is no moisture in it the bhasma is generally stored in an airtight glass or earthen containers why airtight or uh, earthen container is because the bhasma or metal oxides or minerals some of them can be hygroscopic so if they absorb moisture there are chances that the they may get converted into certain hydro salts or salts containing more water of crystallization again that is undesirable next they maintain their potency indefinitely that means bhasma do not have any expiry date 
like that of Asava and Arishta. You, there is no specific expiry date. You can use the Bhasma after many years also. But before usage, make sure that it follows all the above characteristics. Again, lastly, it should not have any characteristic taste. Now, the metallic test, so suppose if you are consuming iron tablet, it gives it leaves a metallic taste over the tongue. But in case of Bhasma, it should not cause any metallic or it should not have any characteristic taste. About the evaluation parameters of Bhasma, uh, like color, odor, taste, it should be non-lustrous. This can be evaluated by focusing the uh, right amount of intensity of light. Then it should float on cold and still water. The particle size should be very fine. That means it should pass through 120 mesh sieve, which is usually made up of silk. Then you can determine the total ash value acid insoluble ash and water soluble now why these ash values for an ash is because some of the basma after incineration they are further mixed with fine powders of crude drugs in certain cases so in that case we need to determine the ash value as well then water soluble matter alcohol soluble matter then besides this at uh, uh, research level you need to determine the scanning electron microscopy that's this gives the external appearance of these micro particles that means are they uniform externally the external appearance of all these particles is it uniform and also the elemental analysis uh, this can also be done by uh, normal elemental analysis methods uh, what we follow in first and second year also this can be done by uh, flame photometry or uh, you can use a tem transmission electron microscopy or sem these also gives the idea about the elemental composition so these are all of the formulations of basma